everyone, this is Sarah from Japan and this is Choco, our three month old puppy. And she is joining us today because nobody is home and she was whining in the other room and she sounded really lonely. I usually teach on Saturdays, but my three o'clock student has canceled, so I have a little bit of time to do this. Okay, so let's open up our Bibles real quick to chapter one in the book of Galatians. Let's get started. Okay, so chapter one, Paul, this is a letter to the Galatians, the, tr the church in Galatia, okay? Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave, it, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Only one gospel. There's only one gospel. Okay. Verse 6, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have, been, we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches, I say it one more time, he says, if anyone preaches, he said this twice now, preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. <laughs> that tickles <a> joke. <laughs> For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. You would be a bondservant of, of men, right? You can only have one master. A call to apostleship. All right. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, for I neither received it from man, nor, I, nor was I taught it, but it came through, through the revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former conduct in, conduct, conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly ze zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Now he was there for three years though contacts at Jerusalem, okay? Verse 18, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him 15 days, okay? So after three years though, in the desert. Afterwards, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and I, and I was unknown by face to the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but they were hearing only, he who firmly, formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God in me. See, God, you know, Jesus really just transformed this man. He did a, he did a 180, you know. You can read about that in Acts chapter 9. All right, about the road to Damascus. She's starting to hang it. <laughs> okay. Defending the gospel, chapter 2. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas. 14 years, that's a long time, and also took Titus with me, and I went up by revelation and communicated to them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were, who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secret, secretly brought in, who, who came in by stealth to spy out our our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us in, into bondage, to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows no personal favoritism to no man. I'm oh, sorry, God shows, no, shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me, but on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter, 
for he who worked for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the Gentiles and and they to the to the circumcised. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I was also eager to do. No return to the law. Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face. So here, Peter and, and Paul have a little scuffle here. They have a little bit of an argument, okay? He, I withstood him to his face, okay? Because he was to be blamed. For being certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came in, he re uh, sorry. Okay, so I read that again. Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. You see, um, Peter was a, being a hypocrite here, and, and Paul called him on it. He says, you know, you, you claim to, you know, preach to the Gentiles as well, and you, and you eat, you know, you eat with them until somebody who's circumcised to another Jew comes, and then suddenly you separate yourself from them. How, how much of a hypocrite is that, right? So he confronted him. Okay? All right? He was, Peter was fearing man instead of God. Okay? And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you, being a Jew, live in the manner of the Gentiles, stop biting. And not as to the, not as the Jews. Why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? Okay. So if you're a Jew and you live in the manner of Gentiles, and not the Jews, why do you tell the Jews that they have to follow the Jewish commandments and stuff? <laughs> you know that's hypocritical. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners, but of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yes, that's right. Hmm. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I have destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, died to the law, that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. I have been crucified with Christ. We should underline that and highlight that. Okay, it is I who no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if the righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Okay, so we who call ourselves Christians, we should not be living for ourselves any longer. Okay, we should crucify our old selves with Christ. Okay, and it should be Christ living through us. Okay, not us living for ourselves. All right, so on to chapter three. This is fun, huh? You're a pretty good uh, companion. Yeah, you are. You know, normally she just bites and chases people, and, and you know, she's just a handful. But when it's just me around, she's sweet like this. <laughs> Ouch! Except for the occasional biting of my ear thing going on now. That hurt. Okay! Chapter 3! Mm. Stinky. Justification by faith. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, but before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly betrayed among you, as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Yeah. Have you suffered so many things in vain? Have you forgotten everything that you suffered? As we was asking them. Have you forgot? You know, we learn through suffering. Have you forgot everything you learned? He's asking them. If indeed it was in vain? 
Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you, it is he, he, who is he? Yeah, it's God. He who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, he, also Jesus, you know, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Did you catch that? Not everyone who says that they believe in God is a son of Abraham. Okay? It says, therefore know that only, O-N-L-Y, only those who are of faith, who are of faith, are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, And you all nations shall be blessed. All nations, not just the Jews, but all nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. The law brings a curse. For as many are of the works of law are under the curse, for it is written. Sorry, did I read that right? For as many as are of the works of the law. Sorry, I missed a word there. Are under the curse, for it is written. Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, and he hung on a tree, he hung on a cross, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We will receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit without faith. The changeless promise Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed, his seed with a capital S, seed being Jesus, yes, were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds. He does not say, and to seeds. He says, seed, S-E-E-D, with a capital S. And to seeds, as many, but as of one, and to you and to your seed, who is Christ, see? And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant which was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. And God always keeps his promises, by the way. Purpose of the law. Okay. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions. It was added. The law was added because of transgressions. Till the seed would, should come to whom the promise was made. The seed again being Jesus. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator does not mediate for one only. But God is one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have stuffy nose here. Is the law then against the promises of God? Is the law a bad thing? Is it against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scriptures has confined all under sin, that the promise by faith, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Okay? But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for faith, kept for the faith, which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor. The law was our tutor, was to teach us, to bring us to Christ, to teach us that we needed to, because we couldn't meet the law, you know, we couldn't obey the, the law completely, you know, because of our flesh. That taught us that we needed a Savior. That's what he's saying here. Bring us to Christ that we might also be justified by faith. And if we believe, if we have faith, we will be justified. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Sons and heirs, verse 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. For as many of as sorry, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Have you put on Christ? Christian, are you putting on Christ? Or you still got your old flesh thing, you know, your old self. Hanging on. 
There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all in one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the, pro according to the promise. Okay, so that's chapter 3. Okay, moving on to chapter 4. Check the book. Oh, there. Thought I heard a car. Okay, Galatians 4. And she's being a good little puppy. Yes, you are. Sorry, I got a little congestion. Galatians 4. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Though he is a master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman. You know, most people are, in fact, all of us, all of us are born under man, sinful Adam. We're all born under Adam. We need a male seed, you know. So, but he was born of a woman with no male seed, okay? Born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the, the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ, okay? You're an heir, a joint heir. Fears for the church. But then, but then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those by which, uh, those which by nature are not gods. Okay, when you did not know God, you served things that are not, that are by nature not gods, okay? But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe the days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. So he's, he's um, expressing the distress of seeing someone who knows the Lord and walks away. How many of us have seen someone that we love that knew the Lord but is walking away? And it's really, it's really you know, it's quite a burden on you know, our hearts, I think. We sh at least we should be burdened by that. Okay? Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of my phys because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you uh, sorry. at the first, and my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that if possible, you, have, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. That's how devoted they were, you know. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you, that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always, and not only when I am present with you. Okay, so how many people do that, you know? But, is, but it is good to be zealous in a... Sorry. My little children... For whom I labor and birth again until Christ is formed in you, I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I have doubts about you. Ooh. Okay. Two covenants. Verse 21. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondswoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondswoman was born according to the flesh. Okay, this was an example to us, what, you know, these two sons, okay, of Abraham. Yes, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic, okay? For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage. We were born under bondage, okay, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is and is is in bondage with her children, okay? But Jerusalem above is free. Jerusalem above is free, the new Jerusalem, which is the mother of us all, for it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you do not bear. Break forth and shout, you are not in labor. 
You, sorry, you who are not in labor, you who do not bear, sorry. Oh, I should read that again. You know, this is why you should read along, because sometimes I accidentally skip over things. But anyway, verse 27. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him, was born according to the Spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the Scripture say? What does the Scripture say? Cast out the bondswoman and her son, for the son of the bondswoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondswoman, but of the free. We were. When we were in sin, when we did not know Christ, we were the children of Hagar. Now we are the children of Sarah. Last chapter, I believe, in the book of Galatians. Okay. Chapter 5, Christian Liberty. Okay. This is an important chapter, so I hope you are paying attention. Verse 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not become entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by the law. Okay, you have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly, eagerly await, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. He's talking about faith. Okay, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. Okay, but faith working through love. Faith working through love. Okay. Love fulfills the law. Love. Love is what it's all about. The love of the Father. Love fulfills the law. Verse 7. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven, leaven leavens the whole lump. Leaven being um, like a antonym for sin i have confidence in you in the in the lord that you will have no other mind but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment whoever he is <coughs> sorry and sorry and i brethren if i still preach circumcision why do i still suffer persecution then the offense of the cross has ceased i could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in the word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by another. Better hurry. Walking in the spirit, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. Okay, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not know the things which you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Okay, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the past times, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, paying attention, okay, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the, the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Did you catch line 26? There are so many Christians nowadays who are conceited and provoking another, envying each other. Okay, so that concludes the book of uh, Galatians. I think that's the last chapter. I have to go, my family. I just arrived home. Oh, it's, I have one more chapter, chapter 6 later. I will come to you later. So, until next time, be blessed in Yeshua's. Bye, I'm out.